By November 1918, World War One was one of the most destructive wars in history and the bloodiest in European history by total number of combatants killed or wounded. There were three days of negotiations which took place in Supreme Allied Commander Ferdinand Foch's private railway carriage in the Forest of Campaign. The armistice was agreed at 5am and 11 November and would come into effect at 11am Paris time the same day. Nevertheless, men were still dying on, even on the last morning of the First World War. At 9.30am, George Ellison was killed, the last British soldier to die on the Western Front. He was killed only a couple miles away from where the first British soldier to be killed, John Parr, had died in August 1914. They are buried in the same cemetery opposite each other. George, Canadian George Prince was killed at 10.58am, two minutes before the end of the war, the last British Empire soldier to die. Seconds after the armistice, the young German Alphonse Ball was killed, becoming the last German casualty. He had joined up in August 1914, aged just 14. The armistice was not a peace treaty, it was an end to hostilities. However, it heavily favoured the Allies with Germany having to essentially agree to complete demilitarization. The armistice initially expired after 36 days but was extended three times until the peace was ratified with the Treaty of Versailles. The peace treaty was signed on 28th of June 1919 and came into effect on 10th of January 1920. In the years that followed the First World War, Europe was mourning the tragedy of losing over 15 million men on the battlefield with 800,000 British and Empire troops having been killed. The first Armistice Day was held a year after its original signing at Buckingham Palace with George V hosting a bank on the evening of 10th November 1919 and having events in the palace grounds the next day. The two-minute silence was adopted from a South African ritual. This had been a daily practice in the Cape Town from April 1918 and spread through the Commonwealth in 1919. The first minute is dedicated to the people who died in the war, while the second is for the living left behind, such as family affected by the loss of the conflict. In the following years, war memorials were unveiled throughout British towns and cities and key battlefields on the Western Front. The Men in Gay in Your Press Flanders was unveiled in July 1927. A ceremony of playing the last, the last post takes place every evening at 8pm. The Theatre War Memorial, a huge red brick structure in the farmland of the Somme, was unveiled on the 1st of August 1932. It has all the names of the British and Empire soldiers, some 72,000 who died or went missing of the Somme inscribed into it. This tradition was carried, was carried on after World War II, with Remembrance Sunday being the commemoration for all those who had made sacrifices in the war. I will now read a poem. This poem is by John McRae and is written from the perspective of dead soldiers lying in their graves. In Flanders field the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing and fly. Scars heard amidst the guns below, we are the dead short days ago, we live felt dawn so sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to ye from fading hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if you break faith with us you die. We shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders field. <laughs>